Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us once again for another one of our Animal Career Day interviews. Thank you so much. You guys have been amazingly and so supportive. I love it. I love getting your feedback. I love hearing from you guys. You have been wonderful. And now that we are open again, I've actually been able to meet some of you in person and that has been truly amazing. So thank you so much for that. Now we know a lot of you guys are still unable to travel and aren't able to come and see us. That's okay. That's why we're still continuing with this virtual content. We want to make sure we're still able to go and reach as many of you as you can. So if this is something that you think would benefit somebody in your life you guys share 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 this is how we reach more and more people because while I'm sure you watching this probably already know and love us guys if you know somebody in your life that would be interested in this one and I think this is gonna be an interview where there's gonna be a lot of people interested in it so go ahead and share as always, guys, donations have been our lifeboat right now, and um, we still need them. Uh, we are able to be open, but guys, we are still on the struggling end of things. So if you guys are able to give any donations, you can donate here on our Facebook page or by going to lionhabitatranch.org, and that makes a huge, huge difference. And to thank you to those who have already donated. You guys are amazing. So again, it's just something where if you are able to come and support, amazing. But if you can't, donations are a great way to show your love for us as well. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. Guys, I am so excited for this one. Uh, one, if you don't know me, I'm Keeper Kylie. You guys have been seeing me all this time, but I'm gonna have you. Why don't my guests, why don't you introduce yourself and why you're so excited about joining me today? Hi everyone, my name is Lauren Anderson and I'm a marine mammal trainer. I currently work with bottlenose dolphins as well as Pacific white-sided dolphins. And I'm so excited to share my experience and my story with you guys today. I'm pretty typical as far as wanting to be a trainer since I was really, really young. That's a very common thing that you'll find among people who work with animals. But my story is just a little unique because I grew up in the Midwest. I grew up in Missouri, nowhere near an ocean, but it was a trip to a marine park when I was younger. I got to see the animals working with their trainers and I just knew in my heart that that's what I was gonna do. And I am a testament to the power of working really hard and never giving up on yourself. I've moved across the country a couple of times and now I'm here getting to live out my dream every single day, which makes me very, very lucky. But because of my experience, I wanna share with other people who also wanna be trainers. Amazing, amazing. Now guys, this isn't a unique Cinderella story. Every trainer you meet, has put in the work. They they have woken up and they're like, you know what? I'm gonna do this. And they work hard. It is hard, hard, hard. So this is kind of a Cinderella story, but it's it's because they made their dreams come true. There were no fairy godmothers involved. So I was really excited to do this interview because I know a lot of you out there have been interested in this. And I think this is a great way to kind of show what it's like to go on and put on a wetsuit every day. So great. <laughs> now, where do you live currently? I live in Florida at the moment, which is like the dolphin capital of the world. But <laughs> I, yes, I love living in Florida. Awesome. Yep. And another one, guys, she just said she grew up in the Midwest. Usually for our jobs, you got to be prepared to move and multiple times. Sometimes it's not your first job or your second or your third or your 16th. Sometimes you just got to keep it going. So always be prepared for that. And that might be a little bit scary, but I promise you, this is such an amazing community that even if you do end up moving, I promise you, you're going to make friends everywhere. So that's why it's really mm -hmm. great. Okay. Now, You've known that you wanted to do this since you were little. What were some of the things that you had to do to get into this field? Certifications, education, and also just regular skill sets. What's something that you had to maybe practice on your own or you wish somebody had told you that you needed to be good at before you started doing this? Well, I'm really fortunate that I have very supportive parents. So they helped me do a lot of research after I discovered that this was what I wanted to do. So from a very young age, I learned how to swim. I've been swimming my whole life. Um, when I was in high school, I was a lifeguard. So doing those procedures in the water and being in the water every single day made me super, super comfortable being in the water, which is obviously very important. 
Um, when I was in high school, I was also really active in theater and choir. So I got used to being in front of a crowd and performing and also hearing my own voice on a microphone. So if you wanted to be a show trainer like me, then that's obviously very important is to be in front of a crowd and be comfortable being in that position. Um, as far as education goes, I got my degree in psychology, uh, which a lot of people are surprised by, but I didn't want to work with animals on a veterinary level. Um, I end up working with animals on a veterinary level, but I didn't go to school for that. I did psychology because a lot of the principles that we learn in psychology, um, positive reinforcement, operant conditioning, classical conditioning, how behaviors are learned, all those different um, things that you'll learn in regular psychology actually apply to animals as well and a lot of what we do as trainers. So that's where that degree comes in handy. For um, certifications and really specific to the job, I'm scuba, scuba certified. Um, I got my scuba certification while I was interning right after college and that's usually a requirement for most facilities to be scuba certified. Um, I'm also CPR and first aid certified. It's been renewed through my workplace but it's just another thing that really looks good on a resume. Um, also shows that you can act in those times if you're working at a, a big park or a big attraction, you're going to be around guests, you're going to have instances that occur with your fellow employees. So having that certification also is really good. And I had one more. Oh, and I'm an IMATA member, which is also an amazing resource, whether you are a current trainer or you want to become a trainer. It's the International Marine Animal Trainers Association. It's a mouthful, but their website has a ton of great resources. They have a job board and discussion boards. They have conferences every single year. And having that, uh, being a part of that association also shows that you're passionate, you're plugged into the community, and it's a great, great way to network. And I, so I, I feel like I was pretty prepared coming into the job, but one thing I don't think I was totally prepared for was the amount of physical activity. I, I thought I was in shape <laughs> becoming a dolphin trainer, but I was, I was wrong. <laughs> so definitely being in, in good physical shape is extremely helpful just because you are on your feet all day long. You have to carry a lot of heavy buckets of fish, all the things that you hear about dolphin trainers, it's totally true. So all of those lifelong experiences and, and just picking and choosing things that you know are gonna be helpful, like being a lifeguard, being involved in theater, all those little things that are just skills that you can, you can naturally sort of work on and they're really gonna help you in life in general, but they'll very much come in handy in small little ways if you are a trainer. Yes, yes, absolutely. One thing I wanna to touch on, let's talk about that physical fitness. If you wanna to apply to be a dolphin trainer, what's something that you usually have to do as part of your application process? You have to pass a swim test. <laughs> yeah, surprise guys. Uh, this is one where zookeepers, we don't have to. We have physical um, limitation requirements. We have to be able to lift at least 50 pounds. Um, to give you an idea, guys, I did that today, moving all of the meat in the freezer. We did the math. I ended up lifting about 14,000 pounds throughout the morning, um, back and forth. So that's my requirement. But I'm on lamp. So that's something that is totally different. So while we have things, dolphin trainers are a little bit different. Go ahead and talk about those swim tests. Yes, yeah, so they, they vary from facility to facility, but they're, they usually comprise of the same different things. So usually a freestyle test. So usually about 240 feet with a time limit. So maybe a minute and 20 is probably the average. Then the most people say is the difficult part, which is true, is the underwater portion. So again, depending on the like facility, <laughs> there, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> it's awful. Um, it's the, you have to have a breath hold and swim underwater uh, designated length. So most facilities, it's around 100, 120 feet. Again, all one breath. Um, and then from there, it kind of varies. So most um, facilities have some sort of surface dive. So they'll throw a weight in the bottom of the pool. You have to swim out, surface dive down, retrieve the weight. Um, you usually have to do some sort of haul out where you pull yourself up out of the pool. Um, usually some have a dive off of a certain height. Um, we do 20 push-ups at our facility. And then some facilities, as soon as you're done with that, they slap on a microphone and have you recite a script. 
So it's extremely stressful also because you're hyped up on nerves and it's usually very early and the water's very cold. And then all of that stress definitely takes a toll on you physically. So swim tests are the hardest part of the application process by far. So definitely be prepared for that. There's no such thing as over preparing for those swim tests. And that, yes, now that I think about it, that is definitely something I wish someone would have warned me about because I did not prepare. I've failed many a swim test. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's not unusual, guys, to fail your first or second swim test. So um, do take that with a grain of salt. They really are a tough thing because this is something where it is really, really important to be able to be comfortable. So I'm glad we were able to talk about this because it is a very, very unique part of this field. Um, to kind of give you an idea, when we're talking about an underwater breath hold, she mentioned it was about 100 feet. Your average kind of swimming pool at the Y or the one that you might be practicing in uh, for most swimming is 25, usually yards, sometimes meters, but it's pretty common to be in yards, and that's 75 feet. So you have to hit that and come back at least halfway on one breath. Um, so when you start preparing, you can absolutely do it, guys. It is something where I promise you, if you start now, you can do it. I hate push-ups. They are my <laughs> nemesis. I hate them. Um, they are the worst. But if you can start out doing two push-ups a day and then do two push-ups in the morning and in the evening and just build on that. If you guys start now, by the time you're getting to your first swim test, you'll feel really prepared. But it is okay if, you know, it's like a driving test. If you don't practice on your first time, that's okay. You're not shunned from the community forever. Um, but it is something to be aware where if you don't pass, you are not able to interview at that point. Um, you have to pass to be able to interview. So even though they're looking at their resume and they're like, hey, you look really, really good. We want to talk to you. Those are some caveats. The other thing, guys, we've talked about this before as well, scuba certifications. Mm -hmm. I just think they're super important. Um, you can do them as early as 16, 15 if you're with an adult. So maybe instead of your first car, guys, I really actually recommend getting your scuba certification. Mm -hmm. It's going to last you a lot longer. And once it's done, it's done. You will never have to recertify again. Um, so it's something where if you think you're going to be in this field, even if you don't think you're going to be working with dolphins, I just think it's a really, really good skill to have because even if you want to be a zookeeper, you never are sure where it's going to put you diving in polar bear exhibits, diving in walrus exhibits, otter exhibits, um, all of those little things. So scuba certifications are great. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I'm like so, getting nervous thinking about the swim test. <laughs> I know. I hated them. I hated them so much. I, oh, oh nope, 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 nope. Oh, and no. I know some people are like super jazzed on them. It's okay, guys. You don't have to be. <laughs> They're one of those like unspoken cringing factors about being a dolphin trainer, which brings up my next point. Um, obviously, you just go and you play around with dolphins all day, right? That's all you do. Oh, yeah, yeah. All day long. That's all we do. That's the only thing that I do. <laughs> yeah. We also hear that a lot, guys. They're like, oh, you guys are so lucky you get to play around dolphins all day. And it's true. Like, there are dolphins all over the place. They're amazing. But I can promise you these guys are working really hard. So why don't you go and go through what your day is like? What are some of your daily tasks? And how early in the morning are you starting some days? <laughs> Um, well, our fish prep starts at 7.30, so we have our staff that comes in right at 7.30, but there's also shifts. I mean, when you work with animals, you're on call 24 hours a day, so today I work 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., so I come in when, when I need to, but our days typically start around 7.30 or so, and of course, that's the fish portion of the day where we sort through and thaw and weigh out all of our animals' diets for the day. Um, and then once the rest of the staff comes in a couple hours later, that's when our morning trains start. So those morning trains are super important because that's the, the, we're saying good morning to our dolphins. We get a kind of a read on their behavior and their mood and their attitude. We take a look at their bodies to see if they've gotten into anything overnight, anything that might have changed from the day before. Um, and those are really, really important just to assess the overall health of our animals for that day. Um, so once we have our morning trains, our day kind of takes off from there. And it's nice because we have the same structure every day as far as shows and interactive programs go, but we work with animals. So every day is a little bit different, which is something that I really love about the job. Um, so it sounds like a lot. We do shows, we have training sessions, we have um, guest interactive programs, but in the grand scheme of things, the majority of our day is not spent with the animals. So 
a lot of cleaning. With a lot of fish comes a lot of cleaning. You will never, I will eat off of the sinks at work because they are so clean. And you have to because obviously it's really important to keep bacteria from growing. So a lot, a lot of cleaning happens throughout the day. And believe it or not, dolphin trainers also have office work that we need to do. So I'll sit behind the computer. We have administrative tasks. Um, we wear lots of hats as dolphin trainers. So we'll have different um, responsibilities during the day that we need to get done. On top of that, we also are responsible for our own habitat maintenance. So in addition to caring for the animals, we also care for their environment. So depending on different projects that we have, that might be something that we'll do. And one of the biggest things about our individual positions is that we're always learning new stuff. So our dolphins are learning, we're also learning, we all have a list of objectives of things that we're working on. So some days I might be learning something new, someone might show me something um, or train me on something new, or I might take on that mentor role and I might be teaching somebody new. So in between those sessions, um, we will be learning those new things and teaching other people. And it's also, I'm sure you'll agree with this, a lot of record keeping. <laughs> After every single session, whether it's a play session, a relationship building session, a show, a training session, whatever, we have to sit down and notate every single thing that happened in that session. Um, it's just a great resource to have to reference back um, for animal histories. And if you come back from a long vacation, you can read the records and see what the animals have been up to. Um, and most days, it's, it's hard to keep caught up with the records because you're running from one thing to the next. But just like Kylie said, I wish that I played with dolphins eight hours a day. But unfortunately, that is not the reality of our job. <laughs> Yes, yes. And one thing I'm glad that she brought up, guys, um, yeah, they're learning. I mentioned in a, in a past episode, too, you guys, college degrees are usually required, and it's not necessarily the specific degree, but once you do in colleges, you learn how to learn. And that's really important in this field because we are constantly learning and we're getting new papers and we are going to those conferences where we're seeing um, doctors and researchers going and presenting new things. And we're like, oh, okay, that's going to change things, which is great. You never want to stay still in this field ever, ever, ever. Um, are you guys participating in any research or anything right now? Um, not at the moment. I don't okay. believe. No, we're not. Yeah. Um, Cause that's another thing they have to go and train the animals to participate in research. So we're learning new things, but um, you know, you have to go and train the dolphins to wear things like e um, heart rate monitors sometimes or have blowhole monitors. And that's something where the dolphins can be trained. We want them to always be voluntary participation, but that's going to be amazing science to learn, but you got to build up those steps. So it's, it's a lot of different work, but it's going to make the field so much better and it's going to make rescuing and rehab better too so it is a huge thing where this is a global community and they are always always learning so it never really stops and I, I really do like that about this field so much mm -hmm. hardest question <laughs> what is your favorite animal it could be an individual or a species oh man um, well, of course, I love every one of our animals of course I do but there is one that sticks out um, his name is Lee, and he is a little Pacific white-sided dolphin. So if you've never seen a Pacific white-sided dolphin before, Google them. They're the cutest things ever. So he is this teeny tiny little dolphin. He's about 40 years old. He's an old man, but he has the biggest personality. And it was one of those things where I had heard about Lee before I got to meet him. <laughs> so he had quite a reputation, a good reputation. And I met him, and I have never worked with an animal who is so excited to see you and so excited to just do things. And if you don't give him enough attention, he sits there and he throws a little fit. He just has such a big personality and he's so vocal. And like, if, if you leave training another animal in his pool and you bridge that animal, you blow your whistle for them, he will get excited for them. Like he'll vocalize and, and oh, he's just, he's so sweet and so cute, very consistent, so intelligent and so smart. And yeah, he just, He's my favorite. <laughs> oh, so great. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. We might talk about training a little bit more. Training is yeah. definitely something that um, is really important in our field, guys. It's definitely getting more and more important. And there's a lot of um, information about training dolphins specifically that I'd love to get into. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, what is something about your job that nobody would expect? You tell people that you are a dolphin trainer and what's the first thing where they're like, wait, you do what? Oh man, I probably, um, probably the habitat maintenance portion. <laughs> um, and I know a lot of facilities have their own maintenance team and we do have our own maintenance team, but when it comes to our animal exhibits, we do all of that work. Um, so I drive a forklift, I'm forklift certified. I will hop in and be scuba diving for three hours, cranking the underwater cables and putting up fencing for our animals. Um, we will dive in 55 degree water and put underwater concrete to patch up, you know, like things I never thought when I was little and I wanted to be a dolphin trainer that I would get to do. <laughs> yeah, you don't think forklifts and wetsuits, guys. No, no, it's not, they don't match, but it's, and, and I know that we're not alone in our facility, so you might, you know, you might want to work someplace specific and be like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna need to put up underwater cables, I'm not gonna need to drive a forklift, but you never know, and you, you really just have to take whatever's thrown at you, and it's, you know, they're cool things to learn, obviously very interesting, and we do it because we clearly care for our animals, so I, you know, people ask how was work and I'll be like, oh, I, you know, put up a couple cables today and, you know, moved, moved, yeah, like moved some heavy boxes around and they're like, are you, are you, are you a dolphin trainer? So that's definitely a very random aspect of my job. Yep. Uh, as a former aquarist, guys, I had to get really good at buffing aquarium acrylic and who knew that would make Bentley's window look so good. So I'm glad I have that skill when I'm working with lions now because I can buff <laughs> acrylic like nobody's business. And it's one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> what is a common go. misconception about your job? Ooh, ah, uh, well, I feel like in the world right now, there are a lot, a lot of misconceptions about my job. Um, which is like a whole other interview in and of itself, I feel like. But I think for me, um, based off of a lot of the comments that I've read, and I've read a lot of them, um, and the posts that we see about animal trainers, specifically marine mammals for some reason, I think a lot of people out there have a misconception about what it is that we do. And I think it stems from the very old school form of training. So 60s and 70s, the first marine parks that were opening really didn't know how to care for animals in human care, didn't know how to train, and they were just kind of making it up as they went. And unfortunately, back in those days, they did utilize a lot of negative forms of punishment. So um, just punishment in general, deprivation, food deprivation, separating them from others. Um, and those unfortunately are true. And I would say that every single marine mammal trainer in the world at this current day disagrees with those principles. And they clearly didn't work <laughs> because we've evolved to such a better place now that focuses more on positive reinforcement. But a lot of people that don't know anything about marine mammal training still believe that the punishment and the deprivation still happens. And that's how we get our animals to do all these things. So when I hear that we starve them, that we force them to perform and all these negative things. And I wonder where they come from. And, and I realize that people have this thought in their brain that we're beating our dolphins with a stick to get them to do whatever we want. And that's just so incredibly far from the truth. And um, so I, you know, it's, it's, I take it upon myself to explain to people what it is that we do, the positive reinforcement. Um, and usually when you explain to people what we do and, and how we train and how our animals choose to participate in sessions, I had animals that they will do an entire session without even a fish. They just enjoy, they enjoy training. They enjoy learning things. If they choose not to participate in the session, that's totally fine. They can, they can wander around the pool. We'll just put their food in a different cooler and feed it to them later. If an animal does something incorrectly, it's no big deal. We just ignore it and just move on in the session. And explaining that to people, I think, calms them down a little bit and gets rid of some of those misconceptions. But there's always going to be people out there that will choose to believe that negative stigma that they've subscribed to for all that time. And I'd save yourselves, listen, save yourselves the trouble now. Some people do not want to have a conversation about it. They don't want to have their minds changed, which is very, very frustrating. But to know that that's a huge misconception out there, it's extremely frustrating, like I said, but 
we believe in what we do and luckily there are people out there that are open-minded to hearing our side of the story and looking into what we do and experiencing it for themselves and that's all that matters love it love it because yeah guys everything changes you guys can't say i don't believe in doctors because they used to leave leeches on people you know <laughs> that you can't do that anymore yeah that's how it used to be done but that's not how it's done we've learned we've evolved and in fact dog training methods that you guys use today are from marine mammal trainers they're the ones who developed that system because they realized that it works. You can think all your amazing dog trainer friends out there, um, you know, have learned this because of the marine mammal side of things. So this is something that they do take care of seriously. And you guys heard her earlier. She's wanted to do this since she was a little kid. You're not gonna go and work that hard to do that many jobs, to get that many certifications, to have to move across the country, to not take care of the animals that you love, that you have put so much time in. Um, you can see this at the ranch. When we're working with our animals, that is love, that is dedication, that is something that they are, fan they're more than family, they are, they are the rulers of our world. We are their minions at this point. Um, and that's how it should be. We also talked about the research that's going on too. This is not something that we're doing for the frivolity of it all. We are doing it because this is how we preserve and save species. And it's and it's vital, and it's vital guys. Species, po species populations are not going up right now. So it's this research coming together on all fronts, terrestrial, marine, aquatics, it doesn't matter, we're all working together. And um, I don't want you guys to think that, oh, just because they work with dolphins that they're sad. If you guys are listening to me right now and you're okay with me being a zookeeper, then you guys know that kind of passion. It doesn't change depending on whether we wear a regular shirt or a wetsuit. It's all the same, guys. I love talking about it. What's your favorite part of your job? Oh, I, of course, it's the relationship with the animals and getting to see them every single day. And I, I remember, like I said, growing up and I would go to marine parks all the time and you hear about the relationship with the trainers and the animals. You can see it in the shows and the presentations, but being on this side of it and actually getting to build that relationship and feel it be reciprocated is totally different than I thought that it would be in a really good way. Um, so I remember when I first started, I would see how the animals responded to trainers that they worked with for years and years and years. You know, they would vocalize when they would come down on the docks. They would um, emit behaviors, you know, outside of session and just be super, super interactive with these trainers. And I would come in and it was like, okay, hi. Like they wouldn't, they wouldn't care about me. They didn't care about me. But now I'm that trainer, like I get to go down and, and see them in the morning and on the first face they see and they get so excited. I can come in on my days off or come in in the morning in just my regular clothes and they recognize me and stop and say hi. Um, to have a specific relationship, there's, there's one dolphin who very picky and choosy with the trainers that he enjoys spending time with and I'm lucky that I'm one of them. And for him to have, you know, a poor day or um, a lot of dolphins, people don't realize this, but they discriminate against new people. So they'll know, you know, you're new, you don't know what you're doing, I'm not going to do anything for you. So this dolphin was giving a trainer a really hard time one day, and they gave me a call and said, hey, we really need you to come over and take this animal. You have a better relationship with him. And I was able to go over and work him through a session, and he was great. And I felt bad for that newer trainer that I kind of come over and <laughs> taken him. But at the same time, it is, it is just rewarding because they, like you said, they become such a huge part of our life. I spend holidays with them. I spend birthdays with them. I spend their birthdays with them. They do become more than family. I see them more than my family. So they're a huge part of my life. And so to know that on some level that I'm also a part of their life, it's unreal. And to have that kind of relationship with an animal, whether it's a dolphin or a tiger or a dog, it, you know, it doesn't matter. But definitely when it's an animal who is incredibly more powerful than you are and it's humbling to be with them and for them to still want to connect with you and have that relationship with you, it's hands down the most rewarding part of the job. Yes, yes. Um, and she's not kidding, guys. A lot of bottlenose dolphins can actually be larger than lions. So you guys have yeah. come in, you've seen Bentley up close. So when you guys come in and you see Bentley at the glass, Bentley weighs 500 pounds. Um, I have been around dolphins who are 600 pounds. Um, and again, mm -hmm. they're in the water, guys. <laughs> so it's a little bit different. So 
they, they're not as small and delicate as people have in their heads. This is a powerful apex predator who wants to come and be near you and cuddle you. Like that's, that is pretty special. And that shows the bond. A trainer can enter the water and they're, they're, they're there to work with them and that shows the relationship. And again, they are choosing to come up. If a 600 pound dolphin doesn't wanna come up to you, they're not gonna come up to you and you just go, okay. <laughs> and that's that. Um, so that's really, really impressive. I, I really, really love that. What is the hardest part of your job? Oh, oh man. Uh, the like I mentioned before, you know, the people that have really just nasty things to say. That's a difficult part, but of course, the hardest part is when you work with living things. They, as living things do, they pass away from time to time. Um, and I know that you can probably empathize a hundred times over, but having an animal pass away is a, it's a reality of the job, unfortunately. Um, you do everything that you can to take, to keep, to take care of them. Um, I've spent overnights with dolphins, um, at the bottom of the pool, holding them up from, you know, midnight till 7am. Um, I remember during the hurricane, we had a hurricane come through a few years ago and we were working 15 hour days nonstop up until that hurricane to take care of our animals. So we are more than dedicated to looking after them. So when one of them passes away, it hits really, really hard because you, that was your responsibility. You were supposed to look after them and, you know, it's all always not your fault. You know, a lot of things just, you just can't help it. Like I said, they're living things, they pass away, but it's, it's really tough. And, you know, it's especially difficult whenever you work in the field because you most likely when they pass, you have to immediately move on to the next thing. So with shows, for instance, you know, we've had instances happen and 20 minutes later, we have to put on a smile and go out and dance and do a show like nothing's wrong. And that is, that can be very, very difficult. So, um, you know, it's, it's, like I said, a sad reality of the job, but in a way it definitely brings you closer with your teammates. It's something that you all experience together. Um, there's ways to honor the animals that you've worked with and you realize that, you know, this this dolphin, this animal, I love so much. They're no longer with us, but now I have all these other animals that I that I do still have to take care of. Um, and it just really makes you appreciate that the time that you have with them and the relationship that you have with them. And um, as unfortunate as it is, it it definitely reminds you of the positive aspects of your job and how important that those relationships are, not just with your animals, but with your coworkers too. Definitely. That is, it is, it's true guys. You, you've heard this from a few different people now because it is, it is one of the hardest things because you can ever, you might do everything right. And unfortunately they still, they still age. That's still something that happens. Um, but in a lot of ways, some, some research might come out of it and maybe the next mm -hmm. time won't be as bad or maybe you, you can go and and work with their offspring sometimes so that's something that's also really really important um this has been an amazing interview i'm going to change things up a little bit here with what i normally do okay. guys if you guys are interested in this i want to hear your questions i want them to be respectful though please um and kind <laughs> but if you guys have questions ask that is what we were doing i will go and i will make sure that lauren is going and connecting with us so if there's questions that we don't have um but this is a field um i'm actually very well connected in myself too so if you have specific questions or if you have general questions this is the format to get yourself to learn a little bit remember in our bug interview she said i had some fear so i decided to learn about them instead Yes, guys, this is the opportunity. If you have questions, and if it looks like it might be something where we have to do another video series, guys, I will do that for you. I will absolutely do that for you because I want to make sure at the end of this, you are learning. You're getting something out of this because what's the point otherwise? But this has been amazing. So um, definitely I will be keeping in touch with Lauren throughout and we're going to be sharing information back and forth because yeah, I've, I've, I've lived it myself. I've seen it. This is um, amazing, amazing work that our trainers do in this field. And it's really, really hard to see that we get so much love if I work with a lion but a lot of hardship when I was over on the dolphin side. Um, and that's something that it's, it's, it's not fair. And I really wanna take this time to say, nope, 
Let's put it on the table, guys. If you have questions, ask. Ask, 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 ask. All right. Um, other things, um, besides Imada, that was another really good one. What about um, if somebody says, because there are so many good resources out there, if somebody comes up to you and says, yep, I want to be a dolphin trainer, uh, are there other places you would want to send them or give them the information to? Um, AZA.org is also a really great resource. So Imada is specifically for marine animals, but AZA covers all accredited zoos and aquariums. So. Um, if you, and, and their job, their job board is actually free. You don't have to be a member in order to see their job board. So that's a great resource to take a look at um, not only jobs, but also volunteer and internship opportunities, which are, I think, more important than, than looking for jobs. Because if you aren't in the field yet, those volunteer um, opportunities, those internships are how you are going to get your foot in the door. So I'll usually direct people to there, um, and most facilities have their own specific job posting. So sometimes it's not on Imana, sometimes you can't really find it anywhere, but you know, depending on where you live or where you can move to, or maybe you do have a very specific um, facility in mind, I wouldn't recommend that. But if you do, you can absolutely go to their website and take a look at any job openings or postings that they might have. Very, very good. Um, I have loved this. Thank you so much for taking your time to come out and do this. I, I hope that somebody out there thinks that, yeah, this is where they want to pursue. Maybe you guys have already known because I think it's pretty common where we've known since we could basically put a, <laughs> write our name on a piece of paper that we wanted to work with animals. So this is you out there. Absolutely. Um, but not sure it, maybe there's something that, uh, you think that this would be good for somebody in your life to hear about and to learn about maybe they they might have some misconceptions that they should go and watch this, or maybe they actually do want to be in the field. Either way, um, we think this is a really great opportunity. So thank you for taking the time out of your night. I know it's, it's later there where you are than where I am. So guys, remember, they take their personal time to do this. This is very nice of them. And of uh, yeah, we'll be in touch. Um, any last words? Um, for those of you, something that was very important for me, so for anyone who wants to get a job as a trainer, do not give up on yourself. I've had many breakdowns, many, many doubts over the years. Like I said, I failed so many swim tests. So it's such a competitive field. There are so few jobs out there. It's tough. I'm not going to lie. It's extremely tough. But I am a testament to the power of believing in yourself, not ever giving up. And when you fail, just continue to try and it will happen for you, I promise. Awesome. Guys, I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, keep coming back on Facebook and checking back for more of our up-to-date information. Uh, we're still in phase two right now. We'll see what happens. Who knows? Things are changing. That's life. We are very flexible. Um, so just keep checking back for those. As always, though, we are open. Uh, we are under guidelines, though. So be sure to check our website as well as our Facebook page to have uh, the requirements. Remember, no walk-ins. You have to pre-purchase online before coming in. Um, but if you can't come and visit us, keep checking out our Facebook, guys. We are still going to be reaching out to you. We're still doing our virtual content because we love connecting with you so much. You guys have been a light in the darkness. I love seeing your comments. I love seeing your shares and, and all of that. It's been absolutely amazing. Um, don't forget, guys, if you can't come and visit donations, please, 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 please. We're not out of the woods yet. So that is a huge help. Feel free to, again, donate right here on Facebook or by visiting our website, which is lionhabitatranch.org. Until next time, guys. Bye, everyone.